Here we, are my, here we are in my restoration studio, and we're looking at a piece of furniture that came in for me to restore. Actually, this is a um, 1840, 1850 piece. Unless the piece is signed by the maker and it's dated, we're only doing guessing games as far as exactly what it was made. Um, some of the things we can be very accurate about. But on this is a country piece, could be anywhere from 1840 or 1820 even, 1820 until uh, 1900. Anyhow, it's a country piece. The reason it's called a country piece because it's rather simple in its, in its appearance and its overall design. Uh, let me show you now, even though it's a country piece, that doesn't mean that it was made, made in property. These drawers are all hand dovetail. Look at the accuracy and the beautiful workmanship in these dovetails. And this is all beautifully blocked. Old look, look at this old surface here, just magnificent from the years and years of age. And of course, look at look at how close and accurately those dovetails are fitted, even after it's over a hundred years old. Let me put this aside for a moment to show you more parts of how this is constructed. This is, a, this is a card cable, of course. It has two pieces at the top. Now I'm going to just show you. We took the hinges off because we're, so we can work on it. See this top folds over like so. And when you want to use it to play cards, you pull out the leg and put the lid down. But talk about workmanship and quality. Look at, the, look at those dovetails there. This is an oak secondary wood. Magnificent workmanship there. And the mortise in the leg. Here is mortise and tenon. And then peg through the mortise. See that peg there? Hand made. Wooden hinge. Look at how accurate this hood wooden hinge is made. Just unbelievable. One, two, three, four, five sections all interlocking with a pin that goes on. See this pin under here goes through the whole works? Isn't that amazing? As I say, it's a country piece, but that doesn't mean that it's not, that it's un improperly made. Look at the inside of how that, how close and accurate these wooden hinges are made. People like to have the old surface as much as possible. So even, you see all these marks here. These are watermarks, these scratches, these dents, misdiscoloration material here. Now we want to try, try to save this surface as much as possible. But of course, this is totally unacceptable. One of the processes we do is to use turpentine and steel wool and to remove what we hope is some of the surfaces treated later with wax and other polishes. So I'm going to take uh, steel wool and turpentine and work this over a little bit and wipe it off to get most of the wax off and hope a lot of the turpentine will soak into these uh, areas here and, and put color. So let me do that right now. So over here I have turpentine and this should be done in a certain method. You just don't want to pour the turpentine on. So I'm only going to put a little bit of turpentine in that so I can control how much goes on the table. Here I have some of the best kind of material to use is toweling. So I'm going to cut up this tally and I don't need big pieces because I can only use a couple pieces at the same time. And then if, the, if I use this and it gets covered with wax and fire material, I have to throw it away and start with a new one or else I'm just smearing the material all around. So notice I only have a very little quantity of turpentine in here. I dip the steel wool, just moisten it. Now I will actively... See it is, look it is, it is soaking into those areas and, and coloring them. Isn't that magic? They may appear a little bit darker when I'm finished, but that, that's acceptable. They sure aren't acceptable being white like they are. 
Now what I'm doing is, with the turpentine and the steel wall, notice I'm going strictly with the grain. And that's the beginning to dry, so I better get wiping that section right now. Well, here I use the rag, the tally. Try to wipe it all off in one direction. You're actually picking the material off. See the dirt and the, and the, the uh, extra wax material that I'm picking off here? So let's continue with the steel wool turpentine and do the rest of this. Look at the, oh, look at all these discolorations here. Now watch what I'm doing here. Oh, I need a little more uh, turpentine. So we just dip a little bit more in. There we are. You have, do have to exert a little pressure here. It's not magic. You have to do put a little energy and work into it. Now we switch to the, I'll use the other side of the rag here. Okay, later on I'm going to ab softly abrade this, but it's got to dry first. So let's let it dry and then we'll come back at a later time and slightly abrade that with some, some fine sandpaper.